In war, it is necessary to fight, to fulfill tasks regardless of conditions. It is most fundamental duty of every soldier to fulfill the mission, to follow the orders of commanders. This is how army discipline is created. The unconditional obedience of soldiers to their supervisor is the most basic requirements of the army. If there is a disharmony in the chain of command, success on the front line becomes impossible. Strong armies are strengthened by the cohesion and coordination of their units. The Russian army has become an army in which the discipline of the mission has become increasingly weak. In the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the real truth has become clear. The Russian army has long since lost its images as a powerful and deterrent military force. The Russian army, one of the most powerful armies in the world, has become an army of prisoners and recruits. While the Russian army is in such a state, the Ukrainian army continues its offensive operations without a slowing down. The Crimean bridge, which was also targeted by Ukrainian army in previous counterattack operations, was hit once again. The Crimean bridge has a strategic importance within the Russian-occupied Ukrainian territory due to its location. For this reason, it is often the target of operations by the Ukrainian army. If you're ready, let's examine the latest offensive operations organized by Ukrainian army in Crimea. Early in the morning, residents of Crimean Peninsula woke up the sound of the explosions. The Ukrainian armed forces launched a series of rocket attacks on Kretsch Bridge, which connects occupied Crimea to Russia. The Russian authorities were at a loss as to what to do in the face of the attack. According to information received, the Ukrainian armed forces fired three missiles at the bridge connecting occupied Crimea to Russia. Russian authorities tried to take precautions against the attack. Russian troops tried to cover the bridge with white smoke in order to secure it, but this effort failed to prevent the attack. The Ukrainian armed forces reportedly fired multiple guided S-200 rockets during the attack. The Russian foreign ministry condemned the attack on the bridge and said it would not go unanswered. In the early hours of the morning, those who saw the smoke emanating from the bridge were astonished. According to information obtained from local sources, Ukrainian troops carried out the operations thanks to the information they obtained from the attacks the Kresh Bridge. When the data provided by Ukrainian intelligence was transmitted to the headquarters, the missiles were fired. Russian air defenses seems to have been caught off guard by these attacks. Sergei Aksionov, appointed by Russia, urged Crimean residents to remain calm. In his statements, he stated that the bridge was not badly damaged. According to information obtained from local sources, the bridge was closed to the traffic for a while. The Kresh Bridge has been frequently targeted by Ukraine in recent days. This is mainly due to the fact that the bridge is the only direct connection between the Russian mainland and the Crimean Peninsula. In the past month, Russian authorities have tried to increase the measures after major explosions on the bridge. As you know, the Ukrainian intelligence service has claimed responsibility for sabotage operations on the Kresh Bridge. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the Kretsch Bridge has been the target of more than a dozen attacks. Nevertheless, it became clear that Russian troops have not been able to establish full control over the region. While these developments were taking place in the Kretsch Bridge, a Russian airplane crashed into another region. Information from local sources confirmed that two crew members of the Russian airplane lost their lives. It was determined that the Sukhoi Su-30 aircraft crashed in an uninhabited area in the Kaliningrad region, the westernmost part of the Russian Federation bordering the Baltic states. Russian authorities said that the plane crashed in the Chernyakhovsky region and the crew did not have time to eject itself. They also announced that there was an explosion in the air during the crash. The Su-30 fighter is a Soviet area fighter jet that was widely used during Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. A technical malfunction is suspected as the cause of the crash. But questions have been erased about the explosion that occurred before the plane crashed. Aircraft accidents in the Russian military have been a hot topic in recent days. The Russian Air Force has suffered numerous non-combat accidents during the conflict in Ukraine. Experts say that the Russian Air Force is facing problems due to the inadequate training and poor aircraft maintenance. It has been revealed that the Kremlin, which has failed to reach the desired point in conflict zones and politics, have now started disinformation activities. The news put forward by Russian military bloggers attracted attention. The author accused Russia of encouraging its military officials to exaggerate their attacks on Ukrainian equipment. 
it turned out that the Russian soldiers were instructed to report false excesses in their mission to please their commanders. It was also revealed that the commanders warned Russian military personnel not to write negative reports. The author noted that Russian soldiers staged some scenes of the war destruction. These war scenes were carried out using vehicles that had already been destroyed in the war. They organized attacks on vehicles abandoned or lost by Ukraine by creating many scenes on different days and at different angles. By videotaping these attacks, the Russian army aims to make propaganda with fake attacks and fake destruction operations. The Russian army's effort to exaggerate the success on the battlefield drew attention. The images and news reports that the spread on social media were shared with a great reaction comments. Military blogger Shovalov allegedly got his information from sources within the Russian army, stating that the Russian army has become a laughing stock due to these disinformation activities. The author said that they should stop this immediately. The author explained how the US-made Bradley fighting vehicles destroyed by Russian forces could be used for maximum propaganda. He said that the video recordings and reports were shot at right angles to make the numbers look high. He said that Bradley was first fired from a helicopter and then hit by self-propelled guns. But the same vehicle was made to look as if it had been destroyed in multiple attacks. He said that everyone in the Russian military knew the soldiers were doing this and that the Russian military leadership had no intentions of preventing soldiers from making false or abolished reports, but rather supported them. Military reports showed that the Kremlin has exaggerated Ukrainian casualties to make Russian operations look highly effective. Russia has not responded to these accusations. The Kremlin's disinformation efforts have been known since the beginning of the war. However, in recent days, social media posts on these subjects have brought this issue back to the agenda. It seems that the Russian people have no more tolerance for the Kremlin, which is trying to cover up its failures with fake news. The steps to be taken by the Kremlin administration in the coming days must satisfy the Russian people. If steps are taken against the Russian people, the social opposition is expected to show much bigger reactions. What do you think is the real purpose of Ukrainian attack on the Kretsch Bridge? What do you think the Russian army is struggling to defend the Kretsch Bridge, which has been the targets of many attacks before? What do you think about the downed Russian fighter jet was its tactical accident or sabotage? How do you interpret the disinformation efforts of the Russian leadership? What do you think the Russian military's need to exaggerate its achievements indicates? We care about your opinion. Please share them with us.